Hey wood turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. Yeah, you've been away a while. Been looking for friends to hang out and do things. Isaac's gone, it's safe. Just a little damp, still can't walk in the yard. But things are drying out. I got a little trouble with management. Mm -hmm. Yeah, management yesterday that I rushed through a part of the video that I'm going to get phone calls about. I talked about using a draw bar. And what is a drawbar? Well, some jigs and chucks that and mandrels that go in a headstock need to be pulled back into the headstock. Like this, a pen blank. See the, see the hole in the end of the, the uh, pen mandrel? See the hole in the end of the pen mandrel? I always use a drawbar in my pen mandrel because at one time I was doing some really high-end pens and I kept getting a chatter or a vibration. I couldn't find it. It was at my pen mandrel was turning in the, the number two and giving me a little bit of vibration and it echoed through the blank. That happens. It could also come out and hurt you. So the draw bar threads into it. Now they come three eighths, five sixteenths, one quarter or whatever. Get some lengths of all thread rod. Get a cap nut to go on it and then find yourself a knob that will thread on it. I get these knobs out of MSC Direct out of plastic knobs and you can get them threaded and they're only about two bucks a pop or at your local hardware store but that helps it pull it in see and some gizmos I use for turning and I've showed you this one I've done bottle stoppers is a bottle stopper collet that needs a draw bar in order to pull it back into the number two this is a 5 sixteenths that fits in that pen mandrel this takes a 3 eighths I've got a 3 eighths hanging up here on the wall for that and all of them have the cap nut and a lock nut and a little flat uh, like a um, an adapter to keep it from vibrating in the tail in the headstock if you get vibration from the draw bar moving around do something about it cut a little tapered wedge or whatever and put it in there vibration echoes into your wood no matter what you're turning it echoes into your wood now while I was at SWAT which was the last week of August and it's coming up the last weekend in August in 2013. While I was at SWAT, a guy came up and showed me one of my own tools, and I want to show you what he did. This is one of my R2 cutters on my half inch bar. This guy took a piece of half inch conduit, and this is aluminum conduit from the um, electrical supply company and he drilled it and tapped it for two quarter inch Allen screws yeah now this handle is only about 10 inches long and he, for a sleeve on it he's got a piece of one inch plastic water pipe he got from the hardware store and he slid it on there now I've got a whole bunch of this plastic pipe and I just didn't get to figure out how to make these connectors better. I'm still working on it. It's still in an R&D phase. But then he took the cutter, the bar for the cutter, and he shortened it to about eight inches. He softened the four corners, as you can see. He softened those corners. One pass on the grinder did it. Then he puts it in the rig, and you tighten it up. You don't have to over tighten it. That's the problem we're running into. You'll thread out, you'll strip out the aluminum. Or now get this, you can use a lightweight steel too. Okay? Just when you're in a hardware store finding that 12 inch nipple, because you got to cut the threads off each end, get them the size of a piece of pipe to go on it. And if it's a little bit loose, doesn't hurt to squirt a little adhesive down in there when you set it and let it dry or cure, cure a couple of days. Now, this is a very short version of the R2 cutter bar and I like it I gotta show you what it does I'm gonna stay with the Ruth Niles offset faceplate the indexable offset faceplate I have it running true true right now and this is my old friend Corian again I have it on double stick tape I'm gonna use that shortened R2 cutter in this on this because I've been hearing from pen turners that this is the weapon of choice for pen turners.
cuts it very nicely, throws a lot of chips up, so you do want to use your chip shield on it. Just my little homemade chip shield for the same tool. beauty of this tool is it cuts from almost every angle. We've got to get this. Now don't forget when using these big thick tools with that riser that rise you need to adjust the height of your tool your tool rest you don't want to be cutting so hard high above center that you get a jump across and the R2 cuts only in the center not off the edges no that's just a pass with the R2 That's pretty nice, huh? That's ready. Now, I also ran across somebody at SWAT that was selling sandpaper, a guy named Vince Welsh. He has these foam products now. And we start, I'm just going to jump right into an 800 and see what happens. Now, I'm showing off here. It's a hero move to go to 800 because I didn't remove the scratches that I have down there. See those lines? I don't know, can you see them? Now, see those lines? That will happen in wood also. Those are damages caused by withdrawal. Withdrawal of fiber. Now, Corian's got fiber. So, by saying, I can go to 800, you're shortcutting your work. You really are. Let me explain. What I mean by shortcutting your work, you take a cut with a skew, or a gouge or a carbide cutter and you look at it and say man that's great I just cut to a 400 grit smooth as a baby's butt well no you didn't you cut nicely but some of your cut may be laying fibers down so when you start with 400 you're not picking those fibers back up and slicing them off they're still laid down and you're just polishing them out. So you splash on a little little finish. Up they come. Then you have a difference in color. You have blotchiness. Why? Because this isn't absorbing the, the, the finish like the stuff that's been chopped off. So he, I talked to a really top-notch expert, world-class ornamental turner whose work sells for thousands. He tells me that he starts sanding with 80 grit paper after a really fine cut because you want to get all the fibers in the same attitude. You want to get all the fibers standing up. You don't want some of them chopped off and some of them up. You want them all chopped at the same length. And then you want them all chopped and all sliced and all done all the way up to the grit that you're going to achieve all evenly and you're going to get a finish that's outstanding you've done a piece you know you have you've done a piece you've got it all finished put the finish on and you say man what happened this didn't look blotchy when I turned it no it didn't you, you did that after turning yeah yeah you did so when you start sanding let's start sanding with 80 100 120 let's get down to some heavy-duty stuff lift all the fibers get them all fresh and then take them down just like you should all the way to what you want to achieve I've heard pen turners tell me I sand the 2000 that's nice if you're sanding a finish but if you're sanding wood to 2000 you're just come on but you can polish the finish to that you can take the scratches out of the finish and bring it up to that that's nice all right, now, let's get back to this project. 
this is the same piece. You don't see those lines or those poles. I went to, to 120 and brought it up. 120, 150, 180, 223, 2400, 600, 800. And how do you do the steps? A nice step is one half of the grit increase over what you had. So an 80 goes to 120, a 120 goes to 180. That's 60 more, which is half of 120. 90 plus 180, they don't have one in that range sometimes. So you go to 220, half of 220 plus 220 is 320. And then the next nice even step is four, six, eight, and on up. And that gave me a really fine polished finish. Makes a big difference. You would think sanding is simple. No, it's just important. I recently saw a demo on this Wagner texturing tool at SWAT. I was trying to see a demo on a decorating elf, but the guy recognized me. And remember, I showed you how to make something real close to that called the decorating genie. Well, he didn't want to show me how to use it, so he stopped showing it and walked away. Surprised. All right, now, 500 RPMs. This is my third time with this. I've sanded two of them off because I didn't start the camera the first time and the second time I didn't like it. Now this time, let's go again. One little 10 second thing. Nice swirl pattern, huh? You want to leave it out or you want to make it defined? Let's make it defined. How do we do that? That's my skew up on edge, on the flat. Looking good? Yeah, looking good. The white's the damaged corian, but you want to get rid of the white? This is Rub and Buff from Michael's Arts and Crafts. Now, I ran across a nice stick. Let me see if I can find that. Hold on. Don't go any found it. It's called a lacquer stick. I think it's the same product. This is something Cindy Droza has on her head at her booth. And it's great for rubbing into your uh, signature when you engrave your signature on the bottom of a piece. And remember, guys, little bitty, bitty, bitty signatures are much nicer than big ones. If they really want to know who did it, they read it. It doesn't have to turn over and bite them in the face. Okay, then we take this, lightly rub it out, and that will cure. Boy, that gives a nice little effect on it, doesn't it? Yeah. Huh. Ten seconds. Keeping all that sandpaper handy is a pain, isn't it? That's a strip of Velcro right there. The back of these pads are all Velcro. Heavy, next, next, fine, super fine. They all fit right down that strip. These are just spares of rough in color, rough in sizes that I might need to go in between something. And this is my hand pad. And it stays there too. So, you may think about a strip of Velcro. If you don't have room on your headstock or the bed of your lathe or it gets in the way, how about right overhead on something like a towel bar or a uh, even a piece of uh, square pipe or, and a little bracket. Hey, you're a wood turner. You can build anything, right? Right. Well, I told you about the, um, the 800, 1200 and all that of these nice soft sponge pads from Vince Welsh at uh, Vince's Wooden Wonders. He's got it all the way down to, I believe, 180 in different strips. This is just a little bit of a, of a higher end product, but he's got it. Now, I mean, if it sands, Vince has probably got it. This is really nice stuff, and the beauty of it is it fits right in a jacket pocket to go inside to the washing machine. Hmm. That's where this one's coming back from. Gotta check my pockets more often. <laughs> I almost forgot something that fella told me about sanding. I mentioned his name, but 
then be a name dropper. Okay. You sand with this grit, whatever grit it is. When you take it away, clean off the sandpaper, not necessarily in a smock, and then clean off the work. One grit from that paper that got carried from the paper before, and the paper before, and the paper before, is leaving scratches on here. So I'm going to start with this piece, and it's clean, and that's clean. And I know I'm not carrying any large grit, or a piece of trash, or anything else back up to the piece. Get done with it. Clean that off. You do that even in rough work, and you'll find that your finishes are much, much better. Playing with something else, just did a few marks on this side. I've used that stick by Cindy again, and I think I'll let it cure before I buff it out real good so that it stays in there. And that's it. A couple of more tricks we picked up over at SWAT. Um, if you're interested in tools now to build your own version of this sporterized tool, you can get the rest of the parts at a hardware store. And I got everything else that you need on the internet. Go to my website and check the fall blowout sale on cutters. If you order on a fall blowout sale, you'll get the good prices, the best prices. And those prices are down 25, 30%. And with the economy the way it is, that doesn't happen a lot. It may not happen again right away. So, I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. I'm making shavings. They turned out to be Corian, but they were shavings and they count. Hope to see you soon. Take care.